Welcome to Grover Load and Microsoft has released an updated list of the supported processors for Windows 11 24H2. While the caveat here is that this is for OEMs, it's still, I think, something to talk about. One, I was on Neil when I'm like, I can't believe they updated the processors. While this is for OEMs, I don't know how many OEMs are still pumping out 8th, 9th, and 10th gen processors. One, you got to get your hands on them, and Intel hasn't, you know, I don't think Intel's even pushing those out anymore, so if you have those, they're, they're old systems, and so why come out with an updated list like this, right? Somebody's going to come across this, somebody's going to look at it, some consumer is, and going to be, whether or not it's anything, it's going to create a talking point to from or from that consumer to somebody that is in the tech world or has helped them with their computers in the past and saying why is Microsoft removing this support right if somebody were to come across this right that's going to be the question and that's the annoying thing that Microsoft uh, that creates for people out there each and every day one I think that this is unnecessary as if Microsoft wanted to do this just for OEMs they could just tell OEMs you, you have to do this right they don't need to have a specific web page for this I think that this is there's a broader you know uh, out pushing of this you know one we already know that Microsoft has created some of these arbitrary items like this where they've said you know the seventh gen is not supported well why is that right doesn't really make much of sense to just you know say it's not supported right they say the TPM stuff all this other stuff right and you know a lot of the seventh gen stuff were quite powerful uh, machines at, especially at the time when Windows 11 came out I, I really didn't see the the need for that and it just created a lot of more or will create a lot more e-waste I do think that you know some of the missteps that Microsoft has especially on the update side the stability side stuff like that are just constant missteps by Microsoft where they could start creating inroads and creating a better relationship for for um, their consumers and creating that and customers and creating that you know relationship rather than trying to burn the bridges every single time they have so that's that's kind of you know some of my thoughts but you take a look at this right and you'll see system requirements and you see right down here OEMs may use the following uh, CPUs for their devices so you go through it right they have some atoms here they have Celerons but if you go down to some of the i3s you'll see it is no more with the 10th 8th and 9th gen so this 11th gen on up is going to be the ones that you can build with and so that's just something to take into consideration right with these who knows if there's going to be more from this but you know I'm kind of been a little bit bitter as Microsoft has been going through and really hurting consumers over the generation especially with Windows 11 we even have stuff out now where we've seen Windows 10 is more performance then Windows 11, they had to do an update for, you know, to get Windows 11 on par with Windows 10. A lot of this stuff is out there. Really unfortunate. There's even a, I think Neilwind had something where the performance is going kind of backwards than it has in the past. So we're on a trend of it actually dipping instead of staying or going up with CPU performance. Uh, yeah, yeah, may, maybe it's not just all the CPU. Maybe it actually is the Windows itself. What's interesting, though, you go to the same support, right? We were just on the Intel side. We'll jump over to the AMD side here. Notice how this is also for uh, OEMs may use this. And if you take a look here, we got the 3000 series, 7000, all that other stuff, right? But what's really interesting, we're all, all through these all these epic CPUs, the 3100, the Z1. And you get here, and you'll see the 2600 is still there. So you still have the 2600. You go up to the Ryzen 7 side, and you'll see that the 2700X is there. So 2700E. So while the Intel list got updated and pared down from older generations, it doesn't seem like that is the case for the AMD side. And that's just one observation I like to like to point out is that this is only there. You know, to me, Microsoft should be doing their best, and even if this is just for OEMs, and there's nothing else that ever comes with this, right? 
uh, that's fine, right? If they do a full new CPU launch, and I'd expect this, right? I'd expect that if you did a full new CPU launch requirements of the old processors no longer supported, we call that product Windows 11. And, or Windows 11. We're on Windows 11. Windows 12. And so I, I fully expect that to be called Windows 12. You know, the Copilot Plus, I think, and the Copilot PCs, I think were a good addition into the Windows 11 ecosystem. While some people think you should have went to a whole new new uh, um, operating system. I don't think uh, we have NPUs on everything, integrated in everything, where it makes sense. So I think the Copilot Plus makes perfect sense in this as we get to a point where maybe Windows 12 makes a lot more sense. And I don't think that Microsoft should go jumping to like a Windows 12 until we finally sunsetted Windows 10 enough and got past that which, which fiasco, which is paying for uh, security updates is going to end up being this is this is the mess that microsoft created and you don't want to create another mess with a windows 12 I, I don't think that jumping to windows 12 in microsoft's current state is going to clean up this mess so how i kind of think of these things is like that and how i think they should be approached and another video on this is software updating and how microsoft should approach that i have a whole thing <laughs> about stability and what microsoft should be doing there because it seems like they're kind of they're missing right uh, on cylinders here they're not hitting you know the efficiency that they need to be uh, in that engine if you're you know relate Microsoft or Windows to an engine here but this is another one of those things where Microsoft is just going through different processor requirements for OEMs to get some news and here we are talking about it and it's another one of those things where Microsoft doesn't have a you know understanding of how this is going to hit out and hit the not just hit out for, well, consumers may look at this, right? They may miss the OEM part. They may see the OEM part. They're going to still have questions on how it affects them. That's the way it's going to be <laughs> until Microsoft kind of, you know, takes the initiative to, you know, really start honing in and making that consumer-focused product, which, remember, it's not about... It's not, it's not about the consumer at all for Microsoft. It's about how much money they put in their pockets. And uh, sure, getting, uh, getting some news out there that maybe we're stopping support of certain CPUs will get people asking about it and probably might get people, some people to buy a new PC, which to Microsoft, that's another Windows license. That's more money in my pocket. So that's what Microsoft is thinking. Not really about the end consumer, about these machines that work really well. You, you should be fine to, uh, if you're computer has been running Windows 11. I've actually put it on machines that don't technically support Windows 11. They seem to be getting updates and stuff and working just fine. Now, granted, Microsoft says unsupported CPUs, so, you know, the 7th uh, gen and older for Intel and Ryzen 1000 older for AMD do not, may not get updates. So just keep that in mind. But I, you know, I, I hope that Microsoft just kind of cleans this out, just keeps pushing out updates that people have Windows 11 installed, maybe some features don't work, but that's the dice that people should roll with, and at least that they have a OS that is supported. And who knows, maybe Microsoft will finally make Windows 11 a little bit more efficient and run a little bit better and have that CPU performance that we all had with Windows 10. With that, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I'll be sure to read them. Uh, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel, helping it grow, watching, subscribing. You know, watching another one of my videos really does help the channel. Liking, subscribing, notification bell also does. Thank you so much. And until next time, God bless.